Humans are one of the few animal species believed to recognize their image when looking at a reflection, but the only one that has developed the tools to do so. From mirrors to self-portraits to cameras, all designed to look at ourselves. It's a strange thing if you've had your picture taken before. You could easily become very sort of self-aware and in other words really know the way it looks. But in fact, I really don't. It's very distorted, I think. The interpretation of how we see ourselves as opposed to how others see you is very different. It takes a lot of work getting people to see your personality when all they can see is your facial difference. What is it about our sense of identity that is so intricately tied with our image? The notion of self gets changed by interactions with others, by cultures. Say, nobody knows you, you are an isolated individual. These factors certainly will change the way self-perception happens in the brain. The way that Faces started was actually playing around with the software. It's software that's used by the FBI to create most wanted posters, but it's fairly easy to use. We sat at our computers and we created, just out of memory, what we thought was our face. Once we printed out those sketches and we compared it with a portrait, we realized half of us were either delusional or just severely mistaken as to what other people actually see. Someone will walk into my office and say, I, I hate this body part, I hate the way, my, the shape of me, whatever it is. Sometimes the experience is so painful for them, there's nothing that I can say to convince them that their perception is wrong. So the disparity is almost irrelevant. The interesting part of this experiment wasn't just the result. We found people had very different reactions when making their own face. Some people would click one or two options and they were convinced that that was their face. Some even reacted very viscerally. If you put the wrong nose on them for an instant, they would almost go into a panic attack. Body dysmorphic syndrome is a condition where a patient obsesses on a feature that experts would look at and, and not even notice. They sometimes won't even come out of the house because they're so obsessed with this one feature on their face. My nose, I feel like it's the first thing that anyone ever really looks at. I'm always like having people retake pictures or whenever you create a mini character on like a video game, I always make my little person like way more attractive than what I actually have in real life. It's so embarrassing. Are there good days and bad days for, for most people? Yeah, I think people have a better day when they can feel grounded in the rest of their life. In LA and in a media-driven culture, people get so caught with how you look, it becomes the currency of self-worth. It was very interesting to see how every person tried to create their own face. It really didn't look like me at all, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether it's just a distortion in the way I see myself. I could not find the right scale for my nose or my eyes or my eyebrows. We don't think we look alike. When we meet someone new, they'll always say how shocked they were at how different our personalities were. I think there's a sense of familiarity that people have. When they see me, they feel they know me because we spend every Monday night in their living room together for an hour. But I think they attribute certain qualities with my face that I don't have. It's kind of strange having people associate an, an emotional connection with, with your face. I see it as that character's face. If you're a celebrity and you're aware that many people know you, will change the way your brain processes your own face. Does self-awareness evolve with age? Considering that I'm reaching up for a hundred years old, surprisingly, over the past 15 years, I, I haven't really altered that much. I might have trouble making myself look old enough because I'm always a little surprised at my crags and wrinkles, so it might be a challenge. What about people who can't see facial features? My own experience with prosopagnosia started when I was about three years old. I was walking down the street with my mother and she let go of my hand to talk to her friend and all at once I started crying and I said, I can't find my mommy. And my mother said, I'm right here. I couldn't recognize her. Certain people, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you might notice little flaws, but from somebody who has experienced an injury like I have maybe, you become hyper aware of everything. And I think I definitely was uh, for a long time. 
Uh, I got hit head on by a drunk driver, had 170 facial fractures, of which I have 83 plates and screws still there. How I see myself now, as opposed to how I saw myself 15 years ago, I see and wish it was then, but I deal with what's now. The questions that this documentary wants answered are about that core difference of what you see when you look in the mirror versus what we can all see. I've been through it all, over 40 surgeries, in and out of the hospital. It's like a second home. This is an image. This is my image. Inside my heart is my personality. It's who I am. I want Burn Survivor to be the last thing to describe me. Why does our brain process our own face differently? What purpose biologically does that serve and how does it affect our social interactions on a more global scale? Identity is evolving. Identity is growth. Identity is change. My face is very much a part of my identity and I'm proud of my scars. One's identity has no color, it has no gender, it has no ill-gotten scars from society. The way you project love. Because after all, vanity never ceases, does it? Ha, <laughs>